A grieving family seeks answers in the wake of last night's double homicide in St. Philip. That's the story we're tracking in your Bobby This Today Evening News update for Wednesday, August 30th. I'm Frenella Wedderburn. For the third time in two years, the Gittings and Burgess families of Maliville, St. Philip, have been hit by tragedy. Around 8 o'clock last night, cousins, 23-year-old Ronaldo Gittings and 21-year-old Kyle Rico Burgess died just outside the abandoned Ralphie's Minimat after gunmen struck. The distraught family could hardly contain their grief. Cousin of the deceased, Caroline Gittings, however, managed to tell Barbados today the family is broken. She says this latest incident is simply too much to bear. And then to other than so in front of boy, if corner said a fight gonna break out before the fight could start corner going around home. Because it's the same way, no noise, nothing. If it's a noise, he can walk away and he can get involved in the noise because he wasn't a noise. A person that like no confusion. It just so like a walk away from confusion. So that tree. No my family that then no noise, no body. You feel how money that is? Oh, you feel, oh, you feel like when my cousin then in 2015, like, he could drop a pin and you could hear everything. Just also, you know, to be like for the past, you also the hot, 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 also the feet, you know. Also, like, of course, everybody can't believe that too, then God. The sudden deaths have hit the Maliville community equally hard. Declan Jordan and his diving partner Kyle had been at sea earlier in the day and they had planned to return to the beach today. But moments later, the dreaded news came. Jordan says he was alerted by his mother that shots had been fired down the road and he went to investigate. But he fell on the Can't get his friend here, Dad. No talk to him two minutes ago. Gone back. I see the deck. And then they could do it. It hurt me. The no ain't no speak to eat. Thought to reach the last. Gone back. They're gone. I thought it really was. It was sad. But it's real. Dead. From talking to some of your friends, they, they tell me that he didn't used to travel anymore. He's going to be involved. He's just going to see. He's a person. He's a travel person. He's going to be involved in nothing. That's Jesse. Jesse's cool. 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 I see there's a flag. A black. I see the people that come to do what they go to do. Anybody they see, they would kill. Regardless if it was them who died or anybody else, they would be seeing it. Cause the body ain't come to pick and choose who they kill. The boy can't just kill. And they come and do it too. Meanwhile, a cabinet minister who is the MP for one of the island's crime hotspots is worried about the increasing number of illegal weapons in the country. Without identifying anyone or entity by name, Minister of Education and Parliamentary Representative for Christchurch East Central, Ronald Jones, this morning strongly suggested that those supplying the illegal firearms were not the average black man, but persons running a business which is developed to a high degree of complexity and modern advancement. Speaking at the media launch of the e-version of the ruling Democratic Labour Party's 62nd annual conference document entitled Barbados First at its George Street headquarters, Jones said this demand a deeper level of investigation. Who are the suppliers to our black men in Barbados of illegal weapons? Because the people who are dying are all black young men. That bothers me fundamentally. And why black young men are preying on each other calls for more deep analysis and deep study, but there's one observation that I've noted. The movement of guns into Barbados has to be an extremely sophisticated enterprise. And somebody or bodies are responsible for that sophisticated enterprise and need to be brought to harsh justice. How long must, historically, and in a contemporary framework, black men have to suffer? If you go back in history, the exploitation first was vicious on the black men, denude and destroy. Today, it's out once again on black men. 
Meanwhile, Attorney General Adriel Braffitt has come under fire in the wake of the double murder. Shadow Attorney General for the Opposition Barbados Labour Party, Dale Marshall, and leader of the Barbados Integrity Movement, Neil Holder, suggests the AG is asleep at the wheel, while the country's safety and security is fast disappearing. Marshall insisted that the government had to take the lead on in eliminating the crime scourge, and he urged authorities to tell Barbadians how they plan to arrest the problem. For his part, Holder called on Prime Minister Frondel Stewart to sack Braffwait if he refuses to step down from office. Three St. Michael young men accused of a Kadumant Day shooting on Spring Garden have been remanded to Dodds until September 26. 17-year-old Elijah Akim Copeland of Chase Gap, Halls Road. 22-year-old Rahim Akim Grimes of Chatterton Road, Carrington Village. And 22-year-old Tristan Sunil Allen of Paris Gap, Westbury Road appeared before Magistrate Douglas Frederick this afternoon, separately charged with recklessly and unlawfully discharging firearms while in a public place in a manner that placed 23 people in danger of death or serious bodily harm. It is also alleged that the three together used unlawful violence, which caused Barry Marshall to fear for his personal safety. They were not required to plea to the indictable charges. In other news this Wednesday, if Barbados is to top its competitors in the tourism sector, then it must innovate and give better value for money. So says Managing Director of Property Consultancy Services, Terry Hanton, a player in the real estate sector. Hanton says it's critical that officials here take the necessary steps to capitalize on a number of niche areas if Barbados is to better compete with cheaper destinations. If you look at the Eastern Caribbean islands, they obviously, uh, their currency is not as valuable as ours, so um, they're more competitive, often more competitive. Their labor rates, their utility costs are lower, etc. Now we need to innovate, and what I mean by that is we need to think about other means of bringing people to the other, to the island, more, more in line of um, additional amenities, whether it be theme parks or whatever it is, we need to be attractive to, to that market. Hanton was speaking with members of the media following the introduction of Phase 2 of the Beachview Villas and Suites in St. James to corporate clients on Tuesday evening. Approximately $20 million is being pumped into the expansion project, which will see the building of 19 condos, bringing the total number to 55. Hanton said since the completion of Phase 1 of the project in 2009, there has been tremendous interest from people all over the world. There's regional and international news after this short break. In regional happenings, former Trinidad and Tobago Attorney General Anand Ram Logan has still not been charged more than 24 hours after being arrested by police. His frustrated attorneys made the disclosure this evening, refuting reports that he was scheduled to appear in court today. Ram Logan was arrested just after 6 o'clock yesterday morning for two offenses, misbehavior in public office and perverting the course of justice. It all stems from a 2015 probe into witness tampering allegations leveled by former Director of Police Complaint Authority David West, who claimed that Ram Logan called him days before his appointment to the PCA and asked him to withdraw as a witness in a matter involving then opposition leader Dr. Keith Rowley. One of Ram Logan's attorneys, Pamela Elder, told reporters she's disappointed with the pace of investigations. 
She noted that since the investigations have been ongoing for two years now, if charges are to be laid, they should have been laid by now. On the international front, as countless people in Houston await help, Tropical Storm Harvey has now swallowed another Texas city. Port Arthur is underwater and Major Derek Freeman has appealed to residents to get to higher ground. At least 24 deaths related to Hurricane Harvey and its aftermath have been reported in Texas as the horror continues to unfold. What did you just go through back um, there? Hell. How much water is in your house? Uh, you can see just uh, people are relieved to at least be to dry water. Uh, you can imagine just what they've gone through over the past uh, 12 hours. Okay. All right. All right, we got you. Don't worry. Don't worry. We got you. We got you. Don't worry. There's been no cell service since Thursday, Friday. Um, haven't gotten a hold of anybody. Um, if, uh, my mom and dad's watching. I'm okay. Yeah, I'm in Rockport. <laughs> okay. Dad, I love you. Uh, <laughs> it was over five feet in our house. We barely made it out. I'm just so grateful that they came. It hurts because you see people work their lives to build something and, and in one night it's all gone. For me, most of it is gone. I'll build back. I got a strong working parents that made me believe hard work will get you back. I'll get going. And it, it's just hard to see everything. It's gone. It's, everything's gone. We're going to try to see what we can salvage from the, from the wreck. Um. And on that note, we come to the end of our news update. But for the very latest, visit our website at www.bobbydestily.bb. Also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates and like us on Facebook. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals or screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you, as well as Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Frenella Wedderburn. Good evening.